In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God fashioned man of dust from the soil. Then he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and thus man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, which is in the east, and there he put the man he had fashioned. The Lord God caused to spring up from the soil every kind of tree, enticing to look at and good to eat, with the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. The serpent was the most subtle of all the wild beasts that the Lord God had made. It asked the woman, Did God really say you were not to eat? from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said you must not eat it nor touch it under pain of death. Then the serpent said to the woman, No, you will not die. God knows in fact that on the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good to eat and pleasing to the eye, and that it was desirable for the knowledge that it could give. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She gave some also to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, O Lord, Lord for we have, have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy, mercy on us, O Lord, Lord, for we have yes. sinned. My offences, truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. 
Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have yes. sinned. Give me again the joy of your help, with a spirit of fervor sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have yes. sinned. The second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin, death, and thus, death has spread through the whole human race because everyone has sinned. If it is certain that death reigned over everyone as the consequence of one man's fall, it is even more certain that one man, Jesus Christ, will cause everyone to reign in life who receives the free gift that he does not deserve of being made righteous. Again, as one man's fall brought condemnation on everyone, so the good act of one man brings everyone life and makes them justified. As by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for forty days and forty nights, after which he was very hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to turn into loaves. But he replied, Scripture says, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil then took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for Scripture says, he will put you in his angels' charge, and they will support you on their hands, in case you hurt your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Scripture also says, you must not put the Lord your God to the test. Next, taking him to a very high mountain, the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. I will give you all these, he said, if you fall at my feet and worship me. Then Jesus replied, Be off, Satan, for Scripture says you must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Then the devil left him, and angels appeared and looked after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Temptation, something all of us, even Jesus today, have to face in life. And while our temptations may not be exactly the same as Jesus's in this gospel, they come from similar basic needs symbolized in the gospel, namely the needs of the body as symbolized by the bread, the need for a relationship with the divine, as symbolized by putting God to the test, and the need for desire and power, as symbolized by the offering of kingdoms. And because temptations address these basic needs, this may explain why we are so weak to it, like Adam and Eve. So how can we strengthen our resolve to resist temptations like Jesus? I suppose we need to first know 
how temptation works, so that by going to the root of the matter, we can learn to resist it in whatever form or manner it may come in. From today's scripture, we see that first, temptation confuses us. It sows doubt or adulterates the truth. What was not mentioned in today's first reading is that God gave permission to eat every tree of the garden, except the tree of knowledge. But the serpent we hear today confused Eve by asking, did God really say you were not to eat from any of the trees? Doesn't this also happen to us when absolute truth is watered down either by our own or the opinions and interpretations of others? Once temptation has confused us, it then tries to convince us with lies. In the Gospel, Satan tries to convince Jesus that the world, the kingdoms, belong to him, not to God. When he tells Jesus, I will give you all these referring to the kingdoms. Doesn't this also happen to us when the world often tries to convince us that we are nothing until and unless we possess what it offers? Having now understood better how temptation works, can we now know how we can resist temptation like Christ? First is to remain focused, to keep our eyes on the mission and on God. Jesus resisted Satan's many temptations because he was focused on his mission. And this is why the Lenten practice of fasting is important, for they remind us that however important or necessary the things of this world are, they are only meant to lead us to God, not end in itself. Fasting challenges us to remove whatever that takes our focus from God. Second is to remain connected, connected to God who is the absolute truth. In today's Gospel, Jesus remained connected by constantly quoting God's very own words, the Scriptures. For as Jesus says, we do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Finally, it is to remain grounded in our identity. Jesus was able to stand against Satan because he knew who he was. There was no need to prove when Satan challenged him, saying, If you are the Son of God. Often, we give in to temptations because we forget who we are, which explains why we go all out at whatever cost to make an identity, to make a name for ourselves. This is why the Lenten practice of almsgiving is important, because almsgiving reminds us not only of the presence of Christ in the other, but also that I am to be Christ to the other. And so, sisters and brothers, let us stay focused, connected, and grounded on God through our Lenten practices, so that as we do this, we not only grow in our relationship with God, but also in our resolve against the various temptations in our life. There will be times, no doubt, when it will be a struggle, but this is where we can take hope and courage from St. Paul who assures us in today's second reading that because of Jesus, it is possible to stand firm because Jesus has conquered not just temptations, but also death. And since we have been baptized into Christ, we can also be victorious against temptation as long as we stay focused, connected, and grounded on Him. And so in response to God's word, we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal, ever-living God, you breathe your breath of life into men that you created from the soil. Hear our prayers which we lift up to you in your mercy and love. Our response. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all the ordained ministers and lay collaborators of the church, that they be always nourished and empowered by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations, that their leaders always work to safeguard the people under their care, especially during this period of the COVID-19 outbreak. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have begun this season of Lent, that our prayers, almsgiving, and fasts will lead to a renewal of faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, hear our prayers which we make in humility, and trust through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. All good and good of all God's holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, He consecrated through His fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Lord Father, Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.